Uh, so good morning from, from us um, and welcome to day two of the 16th uh, Annual Learning and Teaching Conference. The theme for the conference, as you know, is opportunity. Um, and we're not going to set out the type of introduction that we set out to day one. Everything we said for day one does still apply. For those of you that weren't there, what we really tried to do was make the connection between last year's theme on inclusivity and this year's theme on opportunity and really see the two in tandem and really talked about how we want to understand opportunity for all students within the context of the curriculum as well as outside of the curriculum given the particular life experiences and demands that students have on them. Um, what we really wanted to do today was just make a few comments about the relevance of the theme um, to this particular location, the JMS. We planned um, to have this event in here but we delayed the date until we knew we could get the JMS building and I want to just say a few words about why that is um, but uh, just before I do so to thank Sarah and those involved in timetabling for the various negotiations that it took to broker the, this, this venue on this date so thank you very much for that. Um, we stand between you and a scavenger hunt and that sounds really interesting and exciting so we are going to be quite brief um, so that we can let you get on with that. Um, why were we so keen to be here in this building and you will experience a whole range of different settings in this building today. Um, I think one of the main reasons is that it's a very, it's a physical representation of many years of effort in designing spaces that were primarily to be inclusive um, and to support different types of opportunity for students and different types of students and Michaela will say something more about that in a minute or two. Um, and it really is a manifestation of the integration of the themes as I said at the start of inclusivity and opportunity um, that we picked up in last year's conference. <laughs> So what do we mean by that? Well, one of the things when we, when we first imagined this JMS building was to think about what was the kind of experience that we wanted students to have um, just in being here, studying, but also in learning in these kind of spaces. And we, we really wanted to make sure that there was room for interaction. And it was so nice to come in and see people turning around in their seats because that's exactly what we want students to be able to do in here, to interact and to be able to make friends with one another and to collaborate. And we particularly focused on working with coordinators of first year undergraduate courses because as many of you will know many of those students are the most likely to drop out of their studies and potentially not return to university so this is a building designed to really support them in making connections very early on we know from the research one or two good friends is actually what students really need to make it right the way through their studies so that was really important and the other point i wanted to make was um to bear in mind that our buildings can actually be really quite intimidating for students. I remember, some of you will remember, um, I think it was the 10th anniversary of the QA Enhancement Themes Conference, where some students did, I can't remember exactly what it was, it was either a, like a poem or a drama or something, they came from a range of different universities and they talked about buildings and it was such an unusual theme to pick, but they talked about the different um, contexts that they came from and you know this is a fantastic university but if you've never been on a university campus and the first thing you see is the Gilbert Scott it's both wonderful and terrifying so we really wanted this to be a space that students would find it really easy to walk into really easy to settle into uncomfortable to stay so the sticky building idea and that they would feel supported um, so hopefully friendly hopefully a space that they can just chat after class or it's easy to walk out and get a coffee or find a seat to sit down and just make that connection um, all of the teaching spaces are designed to support paired or group interactions. So we had some design principles that were around collaboration and many of you will have heard me talk about that in previous years, so I won't dwell on it. But the point is that it's very easy for students to access in here and to talk to one another and um, to get to know one another, as I said already. Um, it should uh, support late arriving students. So a number of our students are carers. We have around 2,000 students, as we said in the introduction to the day one who have um, responsibilities as carers and um, may have small children. So these rooms up here, if you don't already know, they are connected. There could be somebody who's breastfeeding a small child. They can go up there, they can still hear what's happening in this lecture theatre. It's very easy to arrive late and not have that dreadful fear of everyone sitting at the end of the rows and I can't get a seat in the middle without disrupting things. We've designed it so people come in at the back 
and can be quite easily finding a seat without having to enter the front of the lecture theatre and the least. So all of these sorts of things we thought about when trying to make sure these spaces were as inclusive and easy to access as possible. I'll not say anything about transport and arriving late because the bus didn't turn up or the train was on strike. Um, space to support clubs and societies in the evenings. That was another feature of this particular space. When you come in downstairs, it's very obvious that there's lots of room for clubs and societies. They're really key to building confidence, to helping students engage in activities again, and just to kind of learn an awful lot of skills that really do serve them for life. And I think Michaela might pick up on that in a minute or two. Um, the pop-up space downstairs allows us to have um, showcase skills support, wellbeing support, a whole range of other support at key points in time uh, when students might need them. Some of the spaces are large, um, this is the largest space, but if you look at our teal rooms and some of the activities in them, the technology enhanced active learning spaces, they're, they're the more tech heavy rooms if you like, they hold quite large numbers of students. You'll see we've built little booths into those so that a staff member or a student member who just needs a break from a busy, noisy experience can just take a little bit of a pause and go and sit in somewhere like that. Um, and that's particularly important for neurodiverse students and for neurodiverse colleagues who might value that in particular. It's a venue designed to support group work. So there's study pods, there's social study spaces. It's all about that kind of opportunity to be among other people, even if you're working on your own. And so that was just a flavor of the thinking that went into this kind of building. So if you've been in here, but not necessarily known about that story, hopefully that makes sense of some of the choices that we made. In, in designing and creating this particular space. And we did think a lot about undergraduate students in particular, because we know that they're more likely to be at risk of dropping out, as we've already said, but it's not um, solely undergraduates that we thought about. Postgraduate students really are just as important. And I'm gonna pass the microphone to Michaela in a second, but um, Michaela has been a really, really strong advocate for all students, but especially PGT students. And I think it's really important that we keep their different but particular and needs in mind, especially given the very concentrated period of study that they're with us for. So, Michaela. Thanks, Moira. Um, hi, everybody. <laughs> so, um, to any of you that I haven't met um, yet, I'm Michaela. I'm the VP Education for the Students' Representative Council this year. Um, and before that, I was a one-year master's student. So, I was one of those PGT students who came in never having done an undergrad degree and kind of finding my way into Glasgow in a very short period of time. And one of the things that is really exciting to me about active learning is that there are all these great spaces like the JMS that support active learning, but that it's also about a teaching practice that has those same principles of collaboration and community and finding ways for students to connect with each other. Particularly, I think, for PGT students, as Moira said, um, community's a huge hugely important aspect to them in their degrees. One of the things we hear the most from PGT students and especially international PGT students is a real desire for community to feel like they're connected to Glasgow and the university and they have such a short period of time to do that. Particularly so much of their time is spent in their coursework and in their classes. There's not as much wiggle room as there might be in other degrees where you can do things during the summer seasons that you can find your way as you go through clubs and societies. So many of them are just thrown in the deep end and for that reason, active learning in learning and teaching is one of the best ways for them to find that community and collaboration. I know speaking from personal experience, some of the people who I'm, I'm still friends with and some of the reason that I'm able to say that I have a community and stay in Glasgow are because of those first few breakout sessions. Turn around and talk to somebody, find a quick connection and you suddenly are talking about your music tastes outside of the classroom. And then you find that you have this community of professionals who are in your field, but also in your space and in your community that let you stay and succeed as an academic. Um, and on the note of particular student groups to pay attention to today, the other group of students that I really wanted to touch on with regards to active learning and what spaces like the JMS are able to do for students is with neurodivergent and disabled students. Um, I know that we can look around at these spaces and already see kind of different changes that have been made to make the spaces more suited to them. Um, but it's also something that comes out in practice. Things like how do you have different modes of assessment that allow students to get skills but also do things in different ways that are best suited to their learning style or have different ways of, of learning throughout that let people pick their own route that suits their mode of learning, their needs as a person. and just really make them feel like their field or your field of study is something that they're allowed into. 
Um, I think that that's one of the things that active learning is really able to do and that I'm most excited to be about and hear about today, going around to the sessions and um, seeing all of you speak. Um, so yeah, I think PGT students and uh, disabled and neurodivergent students are some of the groups that are really able to benefit and I hope that there's some interesting conversation around them as well as all the other students at the university today. Um, and with that, I'll pass back to Moira. Thanks, Michaela. Um, the second reason we wanted to hold this event in the JMS is because we're conscious that there are 22 teaching rooms and so many of you may never have been in some of the spaces or had the opportunity to teach in them. So we wanted you to be able to see them, experience them as students would experience them as participants in the room and really to, to kind of help you think about what that might mean for, for your own teaching and the opportunities. We do have um, new teaching spaces in the Adam Smith Business School PGT Hub that will open later this year that will be very similar to the types of rooms that you're seeing here, not on the same scale, but will have the same principles underpinning their design. So that's what we're trying to do. It's what we're trying to do in the refurbished spaces. So you, you'll get to see more and more of, of this type of, um, maybe not 500 seat lecture theatres, but the types of space elsewhere in the building that you you become accustomed to today. Um, so that's really all we wanted to say by way of introduction, other than um, that we really hope that you um, very much enjoy the day, that you make some new connections, you might make, make a new community today, and that you're inspired for some changes in your own practice. Um, and we all know that the Learning Teaching Conference is one of those days where you get to catch up with people you haven't seen for ages, particularly, as Sarah said, we've not been together in this kind of opportunity for quite some time. And hopefully, this microphone will let me do the last part, which is just to give some thank yous. Um, two days of a conference is a big undertaking to organise. So I would just like to say thank you, and I have a list here I'm going to keep, keep to. Um, thank you to everybody who submitted workshop, paper and poster proposals over the, the two days of the conference. If you didn't do that, we wouldn't have the calibre of conference that we have. So thank you so much for making the time to do that. And to all of those who reviewed those submissions and helped... Um, Sarah and the team make those selections of what we would have today and, and in the previous event. Um, can I just say thank you to the ADD team for all their support for this conference and for facilitating so many of the sessions. Day one was the ADD team and a few friends. Um, day two is the ADD team. That's harder to say, Nick, when you're, than you think, actually, isn't it? You must know that. Uh, ADD team and a number of members of the Active Learning um, Network. So thank you to you for, for helping make this, um, this event work. Fiona Bell, who I've had a little look, I don't think is in this room, and she would probably be glaring at me for singling her out if she was. Um, but without Fiona, we would not have a conference. She's an absolutely extraordinarily calm, organizer of these events and it's the first time we've done anything like this in here with a number of different operational considerations than we've had in the past so i really do want to acknowledge the strenuous um, effort she's made to, to bring this event together so if you see her um, do thank her because she really has been incredible michaela um, for being our co-pilot in the conference but also and, and we don't often get the chance to say thank you to the src so i'm just going to take it just now if that's okay um, for being such an inspiration, you've just heard her talk for two minutes and if that's the first time you've heard Michaela talk, that's just a, a little flavour of how she is. She's so passionate about students, so supportive of the PGT community and such an incredible advocate, not just for learning and teaching, but for that whole holistic experience of student wellbeing, student engagement in learning and teaching, but with an understanding of what the university can and can, can't do but with that constant, gentle, sometimes quite direct, but always very, very polite push to go further and do more and absolutely do our best. And, and uh, we, we really, really do value that. So thank you. You're very skillful in how you do things. And um, I've written down here, you skillfully bring conversations around in ways that shift how we perceive learning and teaching. So don't underestimate the importance or the power of that. And lastly, but absolutely not least, and I know you'll feel very uncomfortable, and I'm very sorry, but I'm just going to turn the spotlight on you, Sarah. Um, you, just, you're, you just quietly nudge and encourage people to do things and say, Moira Michaela, do you remember that you're doing a talk? And you just have a lovely way of bringing things together, and I know you and Fiona have worked really, really hard to make this conference work, so thank you so much. But you, you listen to people, Sarah, and you really try and meet the needs of every person in this room and bring together a conference programme 
that works for everyone and that's not an easy thing to do so thank you very much from me and thank you very much from everybody that's here and that was here on day one for all your work we do really appreciate it so i'd like you to just give sarah and fiona and others a round of applause <laughs>